I think when people look at a subscription box, and there are the exceptions, there are the ones that are continuous that people pay money for and, and you make margin. But the way that we've always viewed it is this is a tool in your e-commerce or digital, maybe even physical, we've done some retail ones. This is just another tool in your toolbox to grab that customer and keep them. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast, a show where we interview high voltage entrepreneurs growing and scaling through e-commerce, real estate, and other wealth without Wall Street ventures, showing you the path to making your first or next million. All right, folks, welcome back to the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast. So as always, like, share, comment, and engage. Even if it's dumb comments, it helps the algorithm, helps us beat big tech. So please say something nice or just say something we don't care. Help us get this message out today because I have a fun guest that I've got to know quite quite a bit here in the last few days as we've talked, which I've appreciated. Uh, I think he's a wonderful guy and he's a Midwestern boy like me. So I appreciate that as well. And he's just down to earth values. And so I'm excited to talk today about what he's doing in the world of subscription boxes. So if you're at all interested in adding on a subscription or a box to an e-commerce product, or maybe you thought, hey, I want to start a subscription box business. I have no idea how or what the opportunity would look like. Then this is your podcast for the day. So tune in because as I bring Uh, him on the call. I want you guys to listen very carefully because these are two things you could possibly do to really add some additional value to yourself, your customers, your lifetime value, product variation, and a lot of wonderful things that will increase your brand, increase your value. And for those of you who know what we talk about on this podcast and what we do with Voltage, it will increase the multiple potentials of exit for your business by bringing that subscriber base in and ensuring that you can service them on a monthly or quarterly basis with certain kinds of products and goodies. So without further ado, Paul, welcome to the call, brother. Neil, thanks for having me on, man. That was such a polite intro. I'm I'm looking for who's going to join the show with us. A polite Thank intro? You. <laughs> what? Yeah. You thought I was going to come hammer you? Or so? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's happened before, man. Oh, has it? Yeah. So I got this really stupid guy coming on the show today. No, I'm not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's this weird company name. It's like Bululu or Bululu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. no, no, we're, we're good to go, my man. So what is it if somebody is, let's start with somebody who has a brand. If I've got a brand and I got a product base and I would be curious as how to increase that customer engagement, that customer lifetime value, and maybe do it through the subscription box, box method. What would I need to know about that? Yeah. Well, I think the at the base level, it's all about customer acquisition costs to lifetime value and your payback ratio, right? Yeah. And there's software metrics for that, but what we've found, and frankly, like what I've got paid way too much money to give presentations on is what's called CAC, customer acquisition costs, LTV, lifetime value, and then the payback, right? But I would say with the subscription box and with that, ideally you want to have, everybody has their take on like, well, your lifetime value should be this if you're spending this much or whatever. What I would say is there is actual what is happening with a subscription and then there's the projections. But really what we found and what I get paid a lot of money to share with people is like the thing that matters is how you define CAC, right? Like what does customer acquisition really mean to you? What does lifetime value mean? How are you calculating those things? We like to go by true numbers, right? So like a customer acquisition cost is a paying customer. It isn't somebody that hit your website, right? And so I think really understanding that you need to make enough money and the right amount of time to advertise the subscription or subscription box is like base level, the most important thing. I can share with you if you if you would like it and you can do whatever you want. We actually have a Excel model and a YouTube video. We used to charge 10, 25K to just do it for big brands, but we just recently started giving it out because it's just really good information. That's cool. What we yeah, what we see is most people, they forget about a key element and usually it is customer service, right? Yeah. They think they can launch a subscription or a subscription box or be part of one and they really don't understand the type of customer feedback they're going to get or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all we say is the first thing you're going to get is a probably about 7% of your customers, no matter what, if they buy any sort of subscription, subscription box from you, they're just going to hit you with, where's my box at? And that's okay, right? And so I think knowing a few of those things and like the model that I can share with you, the important thing about it is it's asking you the questions that you probably didn't think about. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, I'm, this is going to be blasphemy because we've launched 
over 50 subscription box programs from scratch. Um, we do a lot of it. We do a lot of traditional fulfillment. Um, but I think now, especially with the Apple and Facebook policy changes, that like subscription can kind of be the kiss of death. Yeah. Um, I would say that they're kind of, everybody's refiguring it out right now. So I would encourage people of maybe instead of going right into the subscription box thing, like we did 12 years ago with our own product, mm -hmm. uh, there are so many levers that you have to manage, right? And a subscription box is absolutely relentless, right? So we work with our clients and we tell them like, hey, why don't you start with like a limited series, right? Let's do a three box series, limited edition, we came up with this concept of different seasons, right? Yeah. We're working, I don't know if I can say who they are, but you can use your inventory and kind of create like season one and it's just a five box series, right? But to jump into like multiple items on a monthly basis or even a quarterly basis, that's a lot. We recommend, first of all, I, I think everybody should have subscription on their website. Second, start with maybe a three month gift subscription where it's set up correctly. And I actually think there's a huge opportunity to go market through other people's subscription boxes. That's an untapped resource that I feel like everybody is missing. I mean, it's, it is a fancy direct mail piece, right? Yeah. I think when people look at a subscription box and there are the exceptions, there are the ones that are continuous that people pay money for and, and you make margin. And, but the way that we've always viewed it is this is a tool in your e-commerce or digital, maybe even physical, we've done some retail ones. This is just another tool in your toolbox to kind of like grab that customer and keep them, right? So if I and, heard you correctly, it's possible for me maybe to add a product that I have into one of your existing subscription boxes as maybe an advertising or product bundle without having to have my own box myself. Is that what I heard you say? Exactly, oh, exactly. Cool. So. Yeah, we, we do, let's see here, who would be okay with us sharing the name? We do a box called Postfly. It's fishing bait and tackle. Okay. And that's a really great one where they have their own products or wherever, but there's no reason that a sunscreen brand can't contact them. I always think it's not wise to go, let me find some subscription boxes that are in my industry and compete with the other products in there. Yeah. Like, don't do that. That's no, silly. complimentary. Um, complimentary. Yeah. What what are fishermen gonna need? They're gonna probably need like sunscreen, right? Yeah. Now well, you're the only thing in their world. And some some of the subscription boxes, I mean, we're talking there's like over ten thousand of them. There's a lot of subscription boxes. Some of them make you pay to be in it, some of them make you give the product for free, et cetera, et cetera. What I would say is if your people that are listening are willing to hustle, like find these boxes that are tertiary. I'm trying to think, I think my subscription addiction has a good listing. Mm -hmm. Go to that website okay. and find a bunch of boxes that are just outside of your market, contact them, tell them, Hey, when you're looking to fill like 2000 boxes and you can't find anybody, let me know. I'm not going to pay. What I do want to do is give, I will send and give you product, but I'm going to put a coupon or a bounce back that comes. To me. They'll say no. But if you do it enough and if they know in the back of your mind when it's a crunch for them, eventually you're going to get that space at just a killer rate. A little guerrilla marketing. I love it. We used to do something like that yeah. with the um, 16 by 9 cards from direct mail. Yeah. We'd go out and get like two or three other people to pay for the mailing and then put our advertising in on it too. So it was free advertising. And still, guys, that works today if you've got e-com brands. Yeah. And, and it's just co-marketing activities is basically what we're getting down, which is, which is super smart. So if you are yep. in a market test that's probably not good for you but if you're in a product launch or you are in a brand building on your your business this is a great way to get your brand out into another channels that do that now if i can mention this if it's okay with you because i know you guys work with some large companies you've worked yeah. with companies like disney you've worked with companies like npr and forbes and wall street journal yeah. just to name a few american express if i'm not mistaken yeah. you guys work with some really big name brands and this is fantastic because guys if you listen you this gentleman knows what he's talking about they've been doing this for more than 10 years and his his wife's well, involved right she's the coo if i'm not mistaken yeah stephanie is she's technically the owner what what i would say is she was an incredible user interface designer for pixar and we're living in san francisco and i've, I've never witnessed anybody it's interesting because basically the user interface of digital 
if you apply that to a physical space and your goal is instead of less clicks and less mouse scrolls, yeah. it's less footsteps, less bathroom breaks, it's a huge unfair advantage. But I, I would say hands down, as far as logistics goes, she's she's going to, that's like our, one of our key things. That's she's amazing. Unbelievable on that's that front. Amazing. Yeah. Now, for those who are watching this on YouTube, just to get clear, that's not a high definition screen behind you right that's actually your warehouse those are your oh man that's it that's Tanya. okay <laughs> that's well you these two, there you go hey look see there's legit because people are like hey that looks like a really good high def background but no that's actually the warehouse where's that warehouse located at we're in lincoln nebraska okay. and here here's a here's a little tip for you we we measure i'm a little obsessive about measuring I okay grew up in the commerce world we'll have a if our sales team takes a call yeah. and the warehouse is behind them like the actual physical one yeah it's at eight percent more likely that they'll they'll book the next call. No kidding. Warehouses wow. do have their place. We had one once upon a time. I have about 21,000 square foot in Utah or kind of the model we were running at that point, which was wholesale testing. We had a separate division for that. We were running the brands and the product and private label, but we also dipped into wholesale for just a little while. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy and effort to run all those people in warehousing, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm just that dude that like just wired to not sleep. I'm into, I enjoy <laughs> it. But if I didn't have a bit of a playground. I think I would just drive everybody nuts. You just we, <laughs> you need to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we have like electric skateboards and like all sorts. Of I think stuff, I saw but, somebody go by on a Segway earlier. Maybe it was a skateboard. Yeah. They went flying by. Yeah. A lot of forms I have to sign. A lot of a lot forms of for Lee. <laughs> CT reset. I'm gonna laugh for five. Sometimes there might be a bouncy castle or something. What would be a good just off the cuff? What would be a good box idea for 2024 if someone's listening to this? Like a couple. I would say. The more, yeah. this is so interesting because I always feel like everything's been, we were the six subscription box. We did vitamins, supplements, healthy snacks, right? Okay. And man, still, I probably get three or four calls a week for either coffee or CBD, like whatever. And I think where people miss the mark is they're thinking about the functionality of the box. They're okay. not thinking about the benefit, mm -hmm. right? Like what you actually get from this box. And I think that if people really focused in on, I'm trying to think of like one that I heard recently that was really good. Oh, there was a, it was a series of boxes, but it was actually like a bachelor bachelorette and it was like leading up to the event. And then, it, and then they had a different box, same website, same everything, but it was like post marriage, like things that you're going to encounter. Right. And okay. yeah, I've seen like specific boxes for new mothers that maybe their child has a condition. Oh, right? okay. Those things, it's almost like the people really underestimate, like it feels like a niche. It feels small, but man, you really tap into that thing, tap into the benefit that really appeals to somebody. Yeah. And they don't, they don't cancel. They just keep well, getting as long. They like the value and the benefit of what's coming. I was thinking of like yeah. a box for college kids, right? That this shows up like every yeah. month with like goods and, candies or something for them every month that just shows up to kind of remind them yeah. at home or whatever. So if I hear college box for students, I'm like, it's been done a hundred times. Okay. I know of some of them that work. Okay. Right. So I'm, I'm hitting and, the obvious is what you're telling me. And, and I go, what, what problem are you solving for? It's cliche, but it's true, right? Yeah. Like, what problem are you solving for college kids? But here's the thing that might not actually be your audience. So one client that we work with, the problem that they're solving is actually for, it's like movie new releases, big, big TV shows, et cetera, where they want to infiltrate campuses, right? Okay. And so the parents sign up their students mm. and they get the food and the snacks and the whatever. But actually their real client is like big brands like Pepsi and whatnot. And these bags just get delivered and put on the doors of the college students, right? Uh, yeah. So the benefit is, the parent feels good, like they're taking care of their kid. Kids happy because they get snacks, new stuff, coupons, sure, sure. whatever. But really, the person getting charged and spending the money is the big brands that are paying for all that. Or you just come in sideways and it's like CBD hemp gummies. We just think about that for a second, right? Co college kids, maybe that's not bad. That's, that's no, that would totally work. I would, I, would, I would say that. I would say like uh, give them like the the smoking utensils or the whatever. Utensils. <laughs> Here's your vape, like the bomb, your CBD the bomb gummies, box, or like the bong cleaner box <laughs> the or whatever. <laughs> the bong of the month club. 
it, it sounds silly, but I would not be surprised at all. I bet it would actually work. Of course, I would be. And we're probably killing it. You'd probably be killing it, and you'd be degrading society at the same time, making college kids mm-hmm. even more stupid. Mm-hmm. We were we were dumb enough as it was when we were in college. <laughs> we don't. Well, I played football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I tell everybody. Yeah, I played man. Wink, wink. What what are not good boxes? Like, what are not good ideas? What where would you say somebody's like? Okay, you are in. I'm going to make something up and you tell me if I'm off target. I am in outdoor gear. I, I, I that's actually one I can think of would be a good idea. I'm trying to think of one that would be a bad idea. What, what would be a bad brand that would be difficult to turn a box into? I guess is what I'm trying to say. If someone's listening to this and they're like, well, I wonder if it would work for me. What would be one that wouldn't work? Is there any combination that couldn't work? It's I, I see it all the time and I'm and I'm sure I'm going to piss off some people. I, I, I consider this like tough love. Yeah. Don't just make a coffee box. Okay. Right? So coffee boxes are really don't overdone just, today. Don't just make like a like a whatever the popular thing is. It's it's like, oh, get your thing. Um, I would say unless you truly, truly can undercut cost on everybody else. Yeah. But what that would take is like you lucked out on a supply chain coffee from Colombia. you're doing it all yourself and you found somebody like Bulu that can get you really good shipping rates. But usually those things feel a little bit like a house of cards because if any of those like hookups or whatever don't work out, you're in trouble. But I also just think building a brand or building anything around solely a subscription box is really expensive and kind of dicey. I think maybe it's your point of entry into the market, but you need to be selling other stuff on your website. That's good insight. That's very good. And tough love is what we want, right? A pure subscription business is going to find itself to be challenging without other products or services are being sold to the back of it. You want to, you want to get a, get a case study where we went from 10 to 60,000 overnight. Let's hear it. (laughs) So we had Bulu box, four to five premium vitamin supplement samples. Frankly, I was doing the thing where I was building the thing that I wish existed. And it was all about like, we were more in kind of this human optimization. Like we were way into that. That was kind of the idea. And it feels like now everybody's starting to get into the body optimization Mm -hmm. stuff. And it just, it just wasn't working. Like we were, it was super technical. It was super everything. And, and I was frustrated. We were all frustrated. And I was like, man, I know what will work. And our team's like, what? I go, we just, we focus on weight loss. And they're like, what? I'm like, all the products that make like a healthy man's body, knowing what I know about the vitamin supplement industry, the actual most of the buyers are females that, and and I quote, because we did a big research when before we even started Bulu, um, I would they say I would love to fit into my high school jeans, right? Yeah. And so we literally took the boxes and we posted the same exact box on our website, but we said Bulu box weight loss, right? You could just tell immediately, like we're getting clicks, more whatever, and we actually had way too much inventory, and we we're trying to figure out a way to get rid of it. So we took the subscription box, we added like a t-shirt and I think a water bottle. We got a group on and we said, what else do we need or whatever? They're like, oh, this is really interesting. And we said, look, we're willing to break even on this. And we couldn't get the margins, but Groupon did tell us if you can say 60% off, that's kind of the magic number, Yeah. right? That's why we took a a three month box series. So it's three months of Bulu box. Added the water bottle, added the t-shirt, because then nobody knows what the what a t-shirt costs, what a water bottle costs, right? Yeah. And then that was exclusive to Groupon, and we marked it up, and then we said 60% off, which basically made us break even. But then in those boxes, we absolutely stuffed them full of come to come back to Bulu Box or even on the lids of some of the products, because we are manufacturing some of our own products too. You open up that lid and it's on the inside, right? They mm-hmm. none of them want you to like push people to your own website, but there's ways to do that. I think we all know, like yeah. Amazon. Yeah, we got like an emergency call first thing in the morning, and and our Groupon rep was like, "How are you going to do this?" And I was like, "What?" And he's like, "We just sold forty thousand of them." And I was like, Whoa. Oh, yeah, and so instantly inventory ran out. We everybody in the company had to get on the phones because we calculated if we make X amount of phone calls by the end of the week, we should be able to secure. Also, we were asking for free samples from brands. So we weren't even, it wasn't like we could go out and buy it, right? But we came through 
And I would say out of that 60,000 on a regular recurring basis, which we had about an eight month span where we would keep people on the subscription box until they buy regular products from us. That's pretty good. I think it was basically we were selling about 6,000 subscriptions or we're keeping 6,000 subscription box customers. We did the 60,000 and boom, our number, we hovered right around 20,000 a regular subscribers after Fantastic. that. So looking at those things, I think everybody's like, oh, Groupon, I don't want to bastardize my brand. Nobody probably knows what your brand is. That's yeah, the probably reality. they're all considering a Groupon. Yeah, it's kind of like Amazon to a degree until you get your brand strong enough or have multi-channels where people can brand right. Exactly, exactly. Like I, it's that's probably one of the other things I see is everybody's like, oh, I don't want to do this because my brand. Like, right. Are you thinking this through? No, <laughs> they're well, stopping the revenue. Yeah. Never stop the revenue, man. <laughs> You're just Never lucky to get eyeballs on it. Like yeah. this is a break, break even marketing method Smart. that's getting tons of eyeballs on you. So please, somebody feel free to take that and do that. Yeah, guys, geez, that's some fantastic case study. <laughs> you guys had everybody on the phone making calls, getting the product done. I mean, that's just that's what time in business gets a little bit of luck when you're just at the right place at the right time with the right situation and you're just yep. capable and able to make it happen. Everybody yeah. thinks that that's just that was a big planned activity when in actuality you wouldn't have yeah. planned to go for no, free that. No, we, no we had no clue. We we really just thought it was a tech issue. The the amount of times we've seen something take off and we literally like with Disney, like we we all thought it was a tech issue. Yeah. Um, which actually it's another kind of good thing that I'd love to share with the the Disney thing is we create subscription box for them. They working with a team of a hundred data scientists flying out to where they at Burbank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And somewhere over there, but working with true global professionals and like, who's the audience all, I mean, it was, and I've been through those processes, but this was some next level stuff. Cause you're like, what do the data people say? What are the branding people, right? Everything that's out to, we created this, our original idea worked. It was a new princess every month and 94% of homes, if there is a female living in it, have at least one Disney item. At uh, least. <laughs> yeah, right? I've got and five so women in my house, so you tell me. Yeah, here's what's crazy. Their challenge was, can we sell faster? It wasn't, can we sell it? It was, can we have new manufacturing equipment? Can we get it to doors faster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of their research said mothers are going to buy this for their daughters because there's a female empowerment issue, or not issue, a female empowerment angle. And that's what everything was. And we didn't think twice about it. We're like, that's awesome, Disney. Cool. Do you care to guess after the first email blast went out to a very vast audience, it's, they they use kind of like rewards points as like a testing ground. Do you, do you first of all, I'll just tell you, it wasn't mothers buying it for their daughters. It do wasn't? Nope. It was dads Not buying even. it for their daughters? This is after all the research. Like I'm talking like 13 months, right? Right. Do you do you want to guess who it was? Well, I was going to say dads, or maybe it was grandparents. So it was grandparents Grand buying it for grandparents bought it for the kids. This was crazy because we saw like two thousand dollar orders coming through, and we're like, whoa. So what happened was grandpas bought their granddaughter birthday gift, but they couldn't just buy them one because they didn't know which princess they wanted. So they bought them a year, right? Well, then grandpa felt kind of bad and they bought Susie something. Well, he better get her sister something. Oh my so gosh. Sally better get a box too. Yep. And then we're going to go, actually, I need to get all of my granddaughters this box. And so you're talking like it was probably like 180 bucks for the year. No, it was more than that. It was a couple hundred bucks. But like these orders come through 2300 2500 and we we were terrified. We thought we broke something, right? But <laughs> you broke like, it in a good yeah, way, and yeah. you're like, "Oh my gosh, we're fleecing everybody for thousands of dollars." <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, did we like add a zero somewhere? Right? What happened? Um, it was all legit. We sold that instantly. That's amazing. And it, but my point is, is like, you can do all the homework you want. You oh, can absolutely. Have, well, like whatever. Until you get that thing into people's hands, you're, you're not really gonna, not yeah. gonna know. That's and, good. and what is the moment you need to listen and you need to maneuver and you can actually perfect. find out the benefit of a subscription. I talk a lot wow. about imperfect action leading to something perfect along the way. And you can get yeah. set on your boat and come up with 13 months if you have the money to do that in order to launch something and only figure out you got it all wrong to some degree, you got it right. 
I would just yep. get in, get moving and figure it out. If someone's going to do that, what would be like the time, energy, attention and money required for them to kind of figure that out if they're going to consider a new subscription box? I would say that I, w- I would really. So the consumer behavior isn't actually the subscription box. It's purchasing a subscription. Yeah. So you're actually fighting with the dollars that go to Netflix. That was an eye opener for us. We're like, oh, my gosh, we're competing with the wallet for Netflix or my subscription box. right? And so I really love when people, um, somebody comes to your website, e-commerce website, they purchase your product, right? But at checkout, throw in a really simple line that says, would you like to add this cleaner, something on subscription, right? Yeah. And I would say that that's really simple to do. Mm-hmm. There's apps out there, recharge is probably, it's the most flexible one, right? And if that's too complicated, sell somebody the product, just send them an email, right? It it is a little tricky to get a subscription and an individual item on the same webpage, but it's doable, Mm -hmm. right? And I would look for probably anything over 1% would probably pique my attention, right? Like if every sale that I get, I'm anywhere close to 1% of those people are buying a subscription, I'm going to key in on that. And I'm going to, I always say like, what? If I can get close to 1% or 200 people. And what we always do is like, we just call them up and we're like, what did you like? What did you, whatever. And that's when you really find out, is it, are they purchasing because it's a headache? Are they purchasing it, purchasing it because they save money? Like, why are they actually buying this thing? Right. And most people cost is one thing, but usually you can learn like, oh, they want this product actually shipped somewhere else for where, where they will be. But I think that starting slow, because also what you're going to be able to do is like set up the customer service for subscription because it's just different, right? You're also going to be able to figure out shipping wise, maybe it's cheaper if you ship it and instead of returning it, if there's an issue, you just leave it there and send them another one, right? And so working out those, yeah, working out those kinks, people always say, oh, we're going to test it and then we'll build it. Like, no, like it's 2024. Most technology can scale, yeah. build it, assume there's some nuance you're going to learn, start yeah. simple, get good at it. Okay, now maybe you do a bundle subscription. But I think I've just watched too many people put time and money and effort and get distracted by it where really it's like, just get a subscription button on your website and see if you can get people to buy it. And if your, cus- if your consumers, aka customers, show that ability to hit the subscribe button, now you have something because it's yeah, the tip it's great. world. But yeah, yeah, it's great. And if you guys are just Amazon only channel right now and you're building your brand, I would definitely encourage you. It's probably fastest for you to get on something like Shopify or maybe WooCommerce, Shopify being a little less complicated, and then be able to set yourself up for a subscription box opportunity like this um, technically and as quickly as possible to get some of the yep. things done that Paul just mentioned. Otherwise, you're going to you know be thinking, oh, I need to hire a developer and do all this crazy stuff. Don't go way off into the desert thinking that kind of stuff. So the tech is <laughs> easier. It's a lot of point and click today. Uh, nope. with many of these things. But guys, if you are interested in any kind of subscription box opportunity for your business an add on a startup or something of that nature, go to bulu.com, check out uh, Paul's business and l- they do everything in a box for you. That's probably the simplest way to put it. If you need support with a box, if they're going to you know, deliver packing everything, they're going to put it together, help you structure it and help you deliver it. So for somebody who's in a business position like me, who's like, oh my gosh, I don't need a warehouse. I don't want people. How do I make this happen? They're going to do all of that for you guys. So if you're really serious about it, if you got a DTC brand and you're not on Amazon, do that. And then also get over to Bulu and set up your subscription. You will add multiples of valuation to your company. I think the overarching thing to really resonate here is that between multiple channels and creating subscribe and save on Amazon and creating subscriptions of some kind, renewable asset, month by month, quarter by quarter driven profit into the business through subscription boxes and other methods. You are adding on multiple points to the valuation of your company. And as somebody who looks to buy these companies, that's what I'm looking for. So make sure you guys are getting that in line with your business because it will increase multiples greatly up to five to 15 X we've seen on businesses for companies who put these boxes in, who put subscriptions in and have multiple channels of sales. And Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Give us some insights. Anything else? Any final words? Any question I didn't ask you? Maybe? Yeah, well, I would say be warned if you hit us up, we'll probably have to fix some logistics things first. Almost <laughs> so always. A lot of people call us and they're like, we want to do this box right yeah, yeah. actually you need to fix you know you got yeah, barcodes yeah. right um no i appreciate your time i appreciate anybody listening that's made it this far and 
And frankly, we just got to say, man, if you got logistics questions, we love pointing people in the right direction. And it's a big, scary industry full of smoke and mirrors. Like I'm kind of calling it out for what it is. Yes, on the subscription and the subscription box, but we like to get things straight and working before we even go to that level. So I think sometimes people are a little disappointed. When they're like, you're not ready. Um, but it's all right, just tough all love. It'll be at least they know what they need now to do to get ready. And that's okay too. So yep. guys, don't be afraid one way or another to figure out what's going on because it's a huge opportunity yeah. well, uh, to build that residual you. income. Thank you, Neil. Thank that's you for coming on, brother. Appreciate you. Back at you. Ask you this. If you're serious about building an e-commerce business starting on Amazon FBA, what if myself and my team worked with you one-on-one to execute the steps outlined in the podcast while helping you discover what the heck to sell, how to make sure it's profitable, and how to successfully launch a brand, plus how to do it under a consulting plus performance-driven model where I put a $10,000 skin-in-the-game guarantee for those that show up and are serious about building a real business done with us. If yes, text keyword PROFIT to plus one four one seven four one three. 4209. That's 1 417 413 4209. And I will personally respond with a few simple questions. If you're not in the US or Canada, please visit voltagedm.com. That's voltagedm.com. Click get started and book a no pressure discovery call with me or a member of my team to learn more about the business builders one on one coaching and mentoring for CEOs, entrepreneurs, and those looking to build an empire or retire using the power of e commerce. Once again, thank you for listening and be sure to tune in, in next week for a brand new episode of the High Voltage Business Builders Podcast.